Hey Tubers, it's Pop Boys Live from the Internet. Just going over some of the Podesta leaked emails from WikiLeaks, and I noticed that they were uh, mentioning several times Zero Point Energy. When they're mentioning the Zero Point Energy, I've always been very curious about it because if there was access to Zero Point Energy, you know, things could be free. I mean, there would be no point in, you know, having electrical bills. I mean, it would save an enormous amount. I mean, if you think across the lines from residential to business to commercial. If nobody had to pay for power, that would be incredible. But anyways, going over again the zero point energy, in the leaked emails, the Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell mentions the zero point energy discussion as well as CERN's investigation of the tau neutrinos. Now the tau neutrino is something very interesting which I think is going to to become a very large topic over the next year or two because basically when you talk about zero point energy the tau neutrino is the foundation for that energy so if you do your research on the tau neutrino the tau neutrino uh, or tau on neutrino is, which is uh, the specific or the scientific name, is a subatomic elementary particle in which it has no net electric charge. So together with the tau, uh, it forms the third generation of leptons, hence the name tau neutrino. Now, its existence was immediately implied after the tau particle was detected in a series of experiments between, uh, I believe it was 1974 and 77 or 78, and I believe that was Martin Burrow, his colleagues at the uh, SLAC, LBL group. Uh, the discovery of the Tau Neutrino was announced in July 2000 by the Donut Collaboration, which is of course the direct observation of the new Tau. So the Tau Neutrino is last of the leptons and is the second most recent particle of the standard model to be discovered. The Donut experiment from Fermilab was built during the 1990s to specifically detect the Tau Neutrino. These efforts came to fruition in 2000 when the Donut Collaboration reports this detection. So I know there's all this scientific mumbo-jumbo, you're talking about neutrinos and leptons, and it sounds something like out of an episode of Star Trek, but basically neutrinos have the smallest mass of all known particles in the universe, and they come in, in three kinds, or three types rather. There's electrons, there's muons, and there's tau. So the neutrinos have no electric charge and are named after their associated negatively charged particles. So the muon and the tau particles are just like the electron, except more massive by factors of, I don't know, between 200 and 3,000 respectively. Now in t April 2002, a team of scientists associated with the Sudbury neutrino observation reported their measurements concerning neutrino flavor changing. The oscillations between neutrino types was clearly shown for neutrinos reaching the Earth from the Sun. The ability of the neutrino to oscillate between types with different masses is strictly a quantum mechanical feature. Electron neutrinos are created in the hot furnace of our sun as strong gravitational pressure at the sun's core as it heats up and fuses the nuclei of its hydrogen and helium gases. Now, as they fuse, they release energy, including x-rays, gamma rays, and I think it's electron neutrinos. So the number of the electron neutrinos observed on Earth are too low to be consistent with the total number leaving the sun. The SNO team detected the electron, muon, and tau neutrinos to directly demonstrate the flavor changes. They showed that neutrinos from the sun do change flavor, or oscillate rather, from one type to another before reaching the earth. Now, the electron neutrino is known to have a rest mass at least two and a half million times smaller than the rest of the mass of the electron. However, since there are so many neutrinos, their total mass in the universe may be significant. One estimate is that for every electron, proton, or neutron in the universe, there are a billion or so neutrinos. So for a long time, neutrinos were considered to have no mass, but neutrino was first theoretically predicted in 31 by Wolfgang Pauli to explain an apparent energy discrepancy when a neutron decays into a proton and an electron. To account for the discrepancy, he proposed
proposed in uh, 1933 the existence of a new particle, the neutrino. He was uncomfortable with his proposal. He said, I have done something very bad today in proposing a particle that cannot be detected. Pauli told a friend. He said, it's something no theorist should ever do, which, again, we've watched the scientific community. Any new theories are immediately thrown out in the beginning until people have a chance to actually assimilate the information and form a reality with it, which usually takes about 10 to 20 years. So the neutrino was used by Enrico Fermi in 1934 as part of his comprehensive theory of radioactive decay. However, it wasn't until 56 that scientists experimentally detected the neutrino. Clyde Cowan and Frederick Rains of the Los Alamos National Laboratory set up equipment near a South Carolina nuclear reactor and managed to capture the track of an anti-neutrino. Good enough, if there's an anti-neutrino, there must also be a neutrino. So Rains won the 1995 Nobel Prize in Physics for that discovery. Cowan, of course, had died in 1974. Now, most neutrinos were created 20 billion years ago, in the earliest moments after the Big Bang, or so theorized. So the newborn universe was hot, dense supermentary particles was among them, was neutrinos. So it's believed that there are today about a billion neutrinos per cubic yard of space that have survived since the days of the early universe. Now, neutrinos are constantly being created in stars, galactic dust, and form the fringes of black holes. So the speed of the neutrinos and thus the total energy vary from small fractions of the speed of light from the neutrinos generated shortly after the Big Bang to speeds approaching the speed of light. Now perhaps the most dramatic source of neutrinos is associated with supernovas, which are the explosions associated with dying stars. In 1987, some 100,000 light years away, a supernova, if you're looking on the internet, SN1987A, emitted a thousand times more energy than our sun will produce in four and a half billion years and was 20 times more massive. Now researchers using large underground detectors in the Kamioka mine in Japan and in the Morton Salt Mine in the US were able to detect 11 neutrinos that emerged from the violent explosion. 11 neutrinos may not sound like much, but physicists get very excited when there is hard evidence of their theories concerning the universe. Definitely something to think about, again, when you're going to the zero-point energy theory which will soon become a reality. You know, in the quantum mechanical world where the neutrino lives, the neutrino may be crucial for connecting the world of pure energy, which is waves and photons, and the zero-point energy field with the world of particles, which is non-zero rest mass. Neutrinos seem perfectly designed to straddle these two worlds because of their very small rest mass, their ability to change flavors or oscillation, their close association with electrons, and their abundance. In your body, there is a dynamic QM web formed by billions of neutrinos and vast number of other particles. This web is a candidate for providing subtle QM interactions that may be related to consciousness itself through many tubulin in the human brain. This tubulin are composed of tiny 25 nanometer diameter microtubules. So again, do your research on the tau neutrinos and zero-point energy. Very interesting stuff. I'll just close this this video up now but thanks for watching guys and we'll talk to you next time